Good evening. Welcome Thursday. This is Thursday, right? Yeah, today's Thursday. I'm so lost on days. Alright, so I'm just starting right off at the turntable. Uh, still got the Zeppelin bootlegs playing. Uh, so, um... I was able to make a comment on uh, Red Room Diecast and uh, Diecastrum today, this uh, evening, just uh, a little bit ago. Um, YouTube was kind enough to uh, put a piece of duct tape over my virtual mouth for some reason, um, as I was not allowed to make any comments on anybody's channels for the past few days. Uh, it was sporadic at best. If I got one comment in on somebody's channel, I was shut down for <laughs> making comments on anybody else's. And that's including shutting my phone off and restarting it. Um, I tried going through the computer, getting the same response. But anyway, uh, I, I had a little bitch fest with YouTube, so things are back up. I'm assuming I'm going to be able to make comments on your guys' channels again. Um, I just don't want anybody to think that I've been blowing anybody off or ignoring anybody because I try to get to all your guys' channels and uh, you know, offer my support. Um, and it's kind of frustrating when I make a comment and window pop-up says it's an error. You're not allowed to complete this transaction right now whatever YouTube Nazis that's probably why I keep getting my uh, mouth taped but I don't care I have freedom of speech and freedom of press and that counts just as much as it does for anybody else um, YouTube's playing around with some with the wrong people. Alright, so what's up on the table? Everybody knows by now this is a hot Hot Wheels. Hewitt's Hot Wheels Custom. It's a 1970 Chevelle Pro Street or Pro Stock, depending upon how you want to look at it. Uh, anyway, it's a one-off that Mr. Hewitt's did uh, for me. And uh, um, this is just one example of a piece of artwork that this guy is capable of. And uh, it, he, trust me, if you have not seen this guy's work before or do not know who he is, go over to Hewitt's Hot Wheels. Subscribe to him. Check out the customs this guy does. He's amazing. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Plus, it's not just the customs that he does. He also has uh, great channel content as well. Um, go check him out. Great guy, great guy in the community. So, I will remove this beautiful car. Um, it's kind of odd that the light is working on my uh, phone, which is weird. I don't know what it's on for. It's not like I'm in a dark area, but whatever. Alright, so I teased everybody a little bit ago about, I guess it was on uh, some shorts I did and uh, the Meekum car sh auction was uh, playing in the background. Um, I actually do uh, enjoy watching that. Um, I'm usually watching it and, and yelling, come on, raise it up, come on, raise the bid, go higher, you know, 
I don't know. I don't know. Call me a, you know, a weirdo, whatever. Um, it just gets exciting to see how high the price of the car can go. Um, and, I mean, uh, it kind of touched on it on my uh, one post with the uh, uh, Carol Shelby's Cobra. Um, and how insanely much money that car went for. Uh, it is insane. Um, but um, as, as I've mentioned to a couple people, it, they, they can now take that car to um, prestigious or elite car shows and charge a premium to have that car displayed at a car show. So it's a win-win for them. They own the car, plus they can charge people to have their car, that car shown at events and be a major attraction. Um, and I assure you that will draw in quite a bit of people. So as you can tell, I'm not playing uh, my vinyl. Uh, I'm using a screw tube. Um, and watch him slap me with another copyright claim when I'm using their platform <laughs> to play the music. <laughs> These guys are so fucking stupid, it's unbelievable sometimes. Alright, so what I teased with was uh, one of these cars from the auction. And uh, I, I've been eyeing this car up for a while and uh, they did a, a beautiful job uh, recreating this one right down to the grill so this is a 1969 Hemi GTX. The gentleman's road runner. And uh, so according to the facts here, one of 98 Hemi GTX hardtops produced in 1969 with a four-speed manual transmission. Um, so we know it's a 426 because it's a Hemi, uh, and it has the air grabber hood. Um, it was refreshed in 1970 in limelight green, uh, with a black vinyl top. It's got a four-speed automatic transmission, um, redline tires, leather bucket seats, and console. So they went from a four-speed manual to an automatic. Um, I don't know why they would do that. Uh, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I'd rather have the four-speed manual. Uh, it sold in Louisville for $100,100. Not a bad chunk of change for that car. Again, kind of a little rich for my blood, but uh, man, how about that color? That's a sweet color. Lime light green. Yeah, that's a beautiful car. All right, and this is a, a green light, and it's from the Meekum Auctions, and the casting was done in 2019. So 2020. I really do enjoy the uh, the Barrett Jackson and the. Uh, the Meekum auction 
series that Greenlight does. Um, between the two of them, I actually enjoy the Meekum a little more. I like the card art a little bit better. So, and I had mentioned this briefly on one of my short videos. Uh, at Christmas, I had a So This Happened. And, uh, this is really cool. Um, because it's a not so this happened. Um, excuse me while I try to put the music back on. There we go. So, um, for any of you who are not familiar with a, what I call a So This Happened, um, a, a while back, um, I've been ordering diecast quite a bit, and and it, it, it just, there was no rhyme or reason to how things were ordered. However, whenever I would get things, it was usually a Camaro and a Chevelle would always come together. No matter what time of the week I ordered one thing and what time of the week I ordered something else or a week later, it they would just show up together. And <laughs> so I wound up getting these two for Christmas. And that constitutes as a, so this happened. And it's even more special because they're both uh, 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 Dan Yanko, Coco um, uh, set up. And uh, I will show first the 1969 Meekum Auction uh, Yanko Copo 69 Chevelle, or uh, Camaro first, excuse me. Good evening. Good evening. Well, we finally made it. Sorry about that. This is really cool. I didn't even notice that on the. I gotta look at the GTX again. I didn't even notice that. So, but I just noticed it on the uh, Camaro, which is a Yanko Copo, but it is from uh, the Meekum Auctions. This is a sweet one. This is, uh, this is beautiful. Okay, so this car... Uh, one of 201 Yanko Camaros produced in 1969, delivered from Yanko to Jack Douglas Chevrolet in, sorry, it's hard to read through the uh, blister pack, Hinesdale, Illinois. Statement of authenticity from Vince M. 426 or a 427 uh, cubic inch because it's uh, a Yanko Copo. Solid valve lifters, high rise intake with 800 CFM holly carburetor, day two headers, turbo hydromatic transmission, 410 posi rear, heavy duty suspension, power steering, power disc brakes. It's in Daytona yellow with black vinyl top. It has the uh, 427 and Yanko emblems and an Endura bumper and push button radio. This one sold in Chicago for 192,500. Uh, so there was obviously a bit of a battle going on with that one. I would have liked to have seen that, uh, but this is uh, again another beautiful casting.
by Greenlight. Um, they nailed this one out of the park. And uh, uh, again, for some of you who do not know that, I am a a Yanko Copo uh, chaser, um, along with the Moon Eyes, um, the Chevelles, and the Camaros. <laughs> But yeah, it's really cool. I'm 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 very appreciative of, of this. And uh, so that leads me to my next one that makes up the so this happened. It's a sweet color. The everything about this Camaro is just beautiful. Yanko Kobo Chevelle. This one just blows me away. I first saw this car on Diecast for you to see. Phil. He had it and as I was watching it spin around, I'm looking at the badging and the stripes, and really, I'm like, the only type of cars that have that kind of stripe are the uh, the Yankos. And I'm looking at it, and I paused it, and I'm like, son of a bitch, he does. I told him, I was like, dude, you got a Yanko Copo Chevelle there, and uh, so as soon as I found out what he had, and I told him. Yeah, I was just all juiced up and drooling all over myself. I uh, went online and uh, ordered it. Um, and uh, I told Kelly that um, any boxes that come in um, with my name on it, I don't want them, just take them and wrap them. So, <laughs> that's what she did. So, um, thanks to uh, Phil, I was able to grab this car. And because it was Christmas and I didn't receive this one and the Camaro until Christmas, that still constitutes as a so this happened. That is, that is a sweet one. And so the information I have on this one is, um, your basic information on it, which I think, they, in the later years of the muscle cars, they kind of started downplaying the horsepower as so not to uh, rile the government up too much about all the horsepower that's been coming out of uh, Detroit since the, the, the basically the early to mid 60s all the way up into uh, the very early 70s um, when the government said all right, enough's enough um, which is a shame because they had to put all those regulations and everything so building off the success from the Camaro in previous years, Don Yanko again used Chevrolet's Copo system to special order 99 Chevelles with the LS2 427 V8 in 1969. Copo upgrades included power front disc brakes, Heavy-duty suspension, a heavy-duty radiator, 
410 Posi, 12 bolt rear, bucket seats. Yanko upgraded further by adding the graphics and emblems. Uh, the Stuart Warner tachometer, Atlas mag wheels, and high performance engine modifications. Um, and the basic information here is uh, this car put out 425 horsepower in 1969. Um, they, I, I'm saying that's that's a bunch of BS. It was probably um, higher than that, but they tried to keep their numbers low so they can keep their cars in production. Um, uh, the uh, 1970 uh, SS 454 LS6, they downplayed the horsepower that came out of that car. Um, it was way more than than what they were putting on paper. Uh, but it was it's, it, it, it did it did the job, the job because they were able to uh, listen to me stuttering over here. They were able to uh, sell that 1970 Chevelle for quite a quite a bit, and, and quite a few people bought that car. Um, they're saying here this car did zero to sixty in 6.8 seconds. Um, considering the weight of the car, uh, that that sounds about right. But still, um, I think I think 6.8 is is being uh, generous when it, it, I think it was probably a little bit lower than that. Um, and the color is champagne. So now I have two 1969 Yanko Chevelles. Those are the hard ones to find, and those are the only ones that uh, have the uh, Yanko Copo package. No other Chevelle does. Um, I thought the 68 did, but um, they don't. And I think there was only one example of a 70, uh, but I'm not positive on that. But I, I, I think uh, there was one example of 1970 that did it. Uh, but it wasn't produced, mass produced anyway. Otherwise, that 1970 would be even in more demand than what it already is. But that is the 1969 Yanko Kobo. That wasn't a Meekum auto auctions. That's just a uh, green light GL muscle. Um, I'm going to show one more and uh, then I'm going to save the rest for um, tomorrow. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save the rest. No, I'll just... I'll show this one. So my Jeep collection is fondly growing as well. And what I have here is a DJ5, a 1974 DJ5 and it's going to look a lot like the mail trucks which is basically what the mail trucks were in 75 the DJ5 uh, but this is a pharmacy delivery Jeep and uh, I always thought they looked a little funny in the back without the tire But this is a, a pharmacy Jeep. I love the orange wheels and the dog dish.
It's pretty cool. Alright, so that's all I have to show for now. And again, I want to apologize to everybody for not being able to uh, post comments on your videos the past few days because I was, uh, I was gagged by YouTube. So, um... Anyway, um, I'll be able to, uh, as far as I know, um, I'm able to start posting comments again. So, <laughs> I will. Um, I just wanted to apologize. I didn't want anybody to think that I was ignoring um, or blowing you guys off because I try to support you guys' channels as well. Um, so that's what I got on tap for this Thursday evening. And you've been watching a whole lot of Zep Channel. I'm Rick. And I appreciate my subscribers for hanging out. Uh, thanks for the new, new ones for climbing on board and checking me out. I appreciate it. If you hadn't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and smash it. Hit like and share. Um, join the party. Anyway, um, you get, I'll catch you on my next video. Um, and until then, you guys stay safe, be healthy, take care of one another, and I will catch you on my next video.